Welcome, everyone. Welcome to the Yes Prep Virtual College Fair. We're very excited to have you participating in this event today. We have some fantastic schools with us. My name is Greg, and I'll be your facilitator. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items. Remember that your cameras and your microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type any questions to our presenters at any time. If you have a particular question for a particular school, please include the name of the school in your Q&A. This is just one of many different sessions happening. Be sure to check the website and sign up for additional sessions. And lastly, this presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com backslash yes prep. And I've already put that address into the chat. Please check the chat for additional information. At this time now, I'd like to turn it over to our first presenter, California Institute of Technology. Hi, would you mind make, uh, allowing me to share a video or share my screen? Uh, can't turn my video on. Um, and I will go ahead and um, start presenting. Um, do I have a video? No? Yes, you okay. are. You're on and good. Okay. Um, so my name is Tessa Tweet, and I am uh, an assistant director at the California Institute of Technology. Caltech is located in Pasadena, California, in the Los Angeles area. I'd like to um, acknowledge that we are on the ancestral lands of the Gabrielino Tongva people. Have you ever been sensationally curious about something? Have you ever wanted the answer to a question, got the answer, and still asked, yeah, but why? Then Caltech might be the right place for you to explore that curiosity. Caltech is a world-renowned STEM institute that brings together some of the world's brightest minds and most innovative tools to address fundamental scientific questions. The institute also manages NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, sending probes to explore the planets of our solar system and quantify the changes here on Earth. Caltech scientists are curious and we are looking for students who share that trait. A lot of breakthroughs can be traced in some way back to Caltech. Think about earthquake scientists or earthquake science, why Pluto is a dwarf planet, the JPL team that is exploring Mars. You can see one of the rovers on the screen. And more recently, Professor Julia Greer, whose group has created tiny structures inspired by the shape of cactus spines that allow a newly created material to gather drinkable water from the air. Everyone at Caltech is curious. An important thing to know about the Institute is that each one of our scientists and engineers and undergraduate students are innovators. People choose Caltech for the challenge of solving the most difficult problems, often through strategies that have never been tried before. All of our students have opportunities to conduct research with professors, usually during the summer. They get paid for working on these projects. Students may opt to do internships in industry instead if they're less interested in academics and more interested in getting out into the, into the working world. Opportunities are abound. We have about 950 undergraduates and we have a three to one student to faculty ratio. This means that you'll get to know your professors really well. These professors might often go on to be your, um, your research advisors. Faculty teach all classes from the large first term core courses to the seminars with five other students and then everything in between. Most classes have 20 students or fewer. Students declare a major from one of our 28 options towards the end of their first year of study. They may double major or choose to minor as well. Uh, students adhere to our honor code and it's a staple of life at Caltech and it reflects the importance of community at Caltech. That honor code is also why students are able to collaborate on all of their problem sets and all of their work at Caltech. We want students to do work that resembles science out in the wild, um, which is inherently collaborative. So you've heard me talking a lot about STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, uh, but no matter what field our students choose to go into, we wanna give them a solid base on which to build. So regardless of intended major, or we call them options at Caltech, 
uh, all students take our core curriculum and have an interdisciplinary base to anchor their studies. Students collaborate on problem sets and learn to ask questions when they need help. Our students learn early on how STEM fields are interrelated by applying principles used in one class to their work in another. Techers learn, live, and collaborate and have downtime on campus in a residential area of Pasadena. They choose from among nine different residences and a variety of living arrangements from singles to doubles to suites and celebrate unique traditions and activities. There are opportunities to dine together, join student leadership, plan and organize special activities such as study breaks, movie nights, field trips to the beach and mountains and theme parks or elsewhere around Los Angeles. We have clubs, um, multiple opportunities for musicians. We're an NCAA, NCAA Division III sports team. Um, we also have club sports and rec teams. Theater and art opportunities are available. Um, students especially love our maker spaces with 3D printers, VR setups, a prototyping lab, wood shop, and other creative spaces. The list goes on. Part of college is learning about yourself and students have opportunities to explore and learn about themselves and the world around them. Caltech is affordable, so don't let that sticker price fool you. We have, um, we guarantee to meet 100% of demonstrated financial need, which means that it's gonna look very different for each student, depending on um, what their demonstrated need is. Financial aid typically consists of um, gift aid, work study, student loans, and I'd really encourage you to check out the net price calculator and my intuition on our website to get a, good, a better idea of what that will look like for you. Now, if you are interested in applying, um, congratulations, we, I'd love to read your application. We are a common app and coalition school. We also accept QuestBridge applications. The, the application is a vehicle through which we get to know you. Think of it as telling us more about you. We have a moratorium on the SAT and ACT for entry into classes into fall 2022 and 2023, which means we will not consider those scores as part of your application material. We will be looking closely instead um, for that academic background through your curriculum, coursework, course progression, and of course your transcripts. Um, and if you have more questions, about applying and life about Caltech, I would encourage you to look first at our website, admissions.caltech.edu, and to email ugadmissions at caltech.edu if you have more questions. I'm gonna pass along the mic to my um, other colleagues, but feel free to drop any questions into the Q&A box. Thank you very much, Caltech. We'd now like to invite Harvey Mudd College to present. Hello, everyone, um, and thank you for your patience as I get myself oriented. Um, so I am the Texas representative for Harvey Mudd College, which is definitely a unique school. We are a liberal arts college of engineering, science, and mathematics, which might at first sound um, like concepts that are at odds, but we'll dive into why that's totally possible and totally um, something that can work. So. We like to think that we are located just 30 to 40 minutes from a lot of the cool things that you might want to do in Southern California, which is where we are based. Um, we're about 30 to 40 minutes from LA. We are about 30 to 40 minutes from Disneyland. Um, and then as you can see in our sort of top right photos, we are very proximal to some mountains, some good hiking. Um, so you're going to have a lot of the benefits of being in a big city, um, but also being like sort of on the outskirts, enjoying the more natural beauty of the area um, and just kind of being away from the, the hustle and bustle of life. Um, so they call Claremont the city of trees and also the city of PhDs. And we'll get into that in a second about why that is. So here's Harvey Mudd College and another angle on sort of our really close um, proximity to the mountains and to the nature that is so distinctive of Southern California. Um, so about this strange city of PhDs situation, um, we are part of the only planned, um, sorry, the first planned consortium in the United States. And a consortium sort of means that we are a body of colleges um, that sort of make up a sort of university type vibe. And we get a lot of benefits from that. We're all located within one square mile of each other. 
we're going to have over 2,000 courses available for cross-registration um, between these colleges. So it kind of functions as one large university with each of these colleges having their own unique um, attributes, um, their own unique vibes and skill sets. Harvey Mudd College being the STEM-based um, college of this of the set. So as I got, um, as I mentioned on our first slide about liberal arts and STEM being definitely able to be combined, um, we see that especially in our mission statement. So the Mudd family was actually um, a family of coal, sorry, a family of copper miners. And something that they experienced was that their engineers um, were very specialized and they had to have just such a large body of engineers and scientists. And so that inspired them to, to create engineers that were really well-minded and really thinking about um, the impact of their work um, and the importance of their work. So we have um, this emphasis on humanities and understanding the importance of what we're doing. We don't just want to do STEM for the sake of doing STEM. We really want to understand um, the overlap between the areas and the importance. And so our curriculum definitely emphasizes that, um, that goal. And so we have a core curriculum similar to um, what Caltech described where we're going to dive into um, a broad depth of different uh, science, STEM, engineering courses, um, and we're also going to, um, so this is going to take place in your first year and a little, a little bit into your second year. Um, this is actually a new curriculum um, in which I feel like Harvey Mudd is very responsive to the student body. And so something that we found is that our students were looking for some more time, um, some more availability to sort of pursue their interests. And so we try to be as responsive as possible to requests like that. And so we opened up some sort of space in the schedule um, by reducing from five classes to four classes for this coming year, um, in addition to a lab. So um, this is the core curriculum here. We're also going to have an emphasis on um, your major, which you're going to dive into after your first year. So we have 10 available majors. Um, and a popular one is engineering. At Harvey Mudd, we're actually gonna have one engineering major, and then you're gonna specialize um, with your major courses and your extra, or, and, yeah, and your, um, your electives. And so that is how you become specialized in engineering. And then the third area, so there's the core, there's the major, and the third area is the humanity, social sciences, and arts. So we're gonna require that you take 10 courses that are um, beyond the core and within these areas. And, as you, as you saw with our consortium, we actually have so many classes available for you to take, which can be unusual for such a small school. Um, these are the, the concentration areas that we offer. Some of these are available. You can completely fulfill them at Harvey Mudd, um, but uh, we have found through our, our monitoring of our students that actually 100% of recently graduating students will end up taking some courses throughout the other Claremont colleges. So your body of, um, of collaborators is just huge and your body of classes is just huge. So that's something that we are proud of. Another thing that we're really proud of is that um, you're not gonna get away from research. So something that I was thinking about, I was a STEM major in school also, is I really wanted the opportunity to have access to professors and to research. And that's not something you'll be able to really escape if you're gonna come to Harvey Mudd. Um, you, are going to be required in one way or another, in fact, to do research. Um, you're, depending on your major, you could do clinic or you could do a senior thesis. And even if a clinic isn't technically required of your major, there are opportunities for, um, for other majors to get involved in that. So clinic is basically a, um, a sponsored project where they pay Harvey Mudd to equip them with, um, with experienced teams of students. Um, so some of our companies have been Google, Intel, um, Microsoft, and uh, a lot of like local um, and big name um, companies will just hire out uh, some of our students to work on a, a project of their choosing. And um, for example, in the bottom left, you see someone was working on um, a light show actually for a company in Las Vegas. And so that's an example of a project we've had recently. Um, so our outcomes, we like to think, um, are turn out pretty well for our students. A majority of our students are going into straight into employment. And we have a lot of people, because we're sort of very interested in the larger picture, we do have a lot of people interested in pursuing graduate school. Um, so you can see some of that information here. Our median salary straight out of graduation tends to be around 117,000, with some of our more popular majors being engineering and computer science. Um, as Caltech mentioned, we also have a very strong emphasis on the honor code. 
And um, some of the benefits of that include take home exams even before the pandemic, um, just a responsibility and feedback relationship with the students where they were listening to the students and allowing them some freedoms that um, that wouldn't otherwise be the case. So maybe this all sounds great to you. So some key points about um, admission for us are um, we're going to take the Common App and Coalition app. We're going to look for a teacher recommendation in math or science, and also a teacher recommendation in humanities, social sciences, and arts. Um, so we'll want one of each of those. And we're test optional for this coming year. So those are some of our key points. And then in terms of financial aid, we are going to be um, need blind for US citizens and permanent residents. And for all students, we're going to meet 100% of calculated financial need. So those are some of our key points on financial aid. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to um, interact with me and to learn about our college. So I'll pass it on to the next, the next presenter. Thank you very much, Harvey Mudd University, uh, College. We'd now like to pass it on to Massachusetts Institute, Institute of Technology. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, let me also get my presentation started. All right. So hi, everyone. Um, if you can see my screen, um, welcome. Uh, my name is Danielle Tate. I am one of the assistant directors in the uh, Office of Admissions at MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Um, and I wanted to start off by saying, you know, we're located in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and really the heart of MIT, if you've ever heard of our name before, um, is really to advance knowledge and educate students in science and technology, other areas of STEM um, that will best serve the nation and the world in the 20th first century. Um, so this is really at the heart of, of what why we do what we do. Um, and this is really seen through our motto as well, which is Mens et Manus. Uh, Mens et Manus literally means mind and hand. Um, and we want to make sure that when our students come to campus, that they are actually getting um, to understand, you know, how STEM, how science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and all of these areas really do relate to the real world. So at the time that MIT was created, um, our founder really felt it important to make sure that students are able to truly express themselves in STEM outside of the classroom and inside of the classroom setting. So we want to make sure that students are getting this hands-on learning experience. And I love showing this picture that's here on your screen because I can't explain it any better than when our students are building things on campus. This is one of our many builds on campus. Um, this is our East Campus roller coaster, where you can actually see what students are doing outside of the classroom on their own without even professors' guidance or supervision. If you are the type of student that is interested in being celebrated and, and really um, being around others who have an interest in STEM, who have an interest in building, or even being an entrepreneur, you will find that on our campus. So a little bit more about this specific project. Um, our students gather together every year um, for something called our re residential exploration like week. Um, and they show off the different cultures of the different um, dormitories that exist. And this one dormitory called East Campus, um, they are known for building amusement park rides. So this right here is actually an amusement park ride, um, a roller coaster um, that is actually built up to code. Um, so the city of Cambridge also comes in and makes sure that you know, it's okay to ride on this roller coaster, but our students are truly before they even start classes, before they're even starting classes, able to really explore and learn outside of the classroom and, and do it together in a way that is very collaborative. One of the many questions that I receive um, about MIT is, you know, is it a collaborative space to be collaborative space to be in or is it competitive? And one of the main things that all of our students will be able to tell you is that, you know, in order to create these projects, in order to work together, even in the classroom settings to do P-sets, you have to work with one another. So that's something that our students value about being on campus. 
just in this project alone, even though it's not, you know, probably a groundbreaking project, you can see many of the different schools that exist at MIT shown in this project. So we do have different, uh, different schools on campus. I know everyone knows MIT for engineering specifically, but we have architecture and planning, our school of engineering, our humanities, arts and social sciences school, our Sloan School of Management, our School of Science, and our College of Computing, which is new to us as well. Um, so no matter what you're interested in, if you have an interest in STEM, um, you can definitely, um, you know, see yourself here at MIT. In terms of research, um, many of our students are involved in undergraduate research. About 90% of students at some point in time are involved in one of what we call EUROPS. Uh, we have a lot of acronyms here at MIT and we use a lot of numbers for classes. Um, a EUROP literally stands for Undergraduate Research Opportunity Program. Um, so we have a full website dedicated to finding different research opportunities. And I was even looking at some of them this morning. Um, so if you're interested in doing things like um, finding different biodegradable ways to deliver drugs or um, even to de deliver bionutrients, that's something that is actually posted online from a professor or a grad student that you can get involved in that research. Um, some of our students are able to find research by looking at a website. Others are able to literally just reach out to their professors, email them, and get involved in research in that way as well. So our students are very involved um, in research. And again, this concept of research, even though it's MIT and many people will think STEM, uh, we also have you know, humanities, arts, and social science research going on as well. Um, so there's one that's actually up right now about superhero comics research, uh, a study that's happening. Um, so really our students, you know, are very involved in research. It's very accessible. And many of our students will get involved in a year up at least two to three per year. Um, students can do research opportunity programs for credit, or they can also do it for pay. They can do it throughout the year or during the summertime or even during our January period, which is known as our independent activities period too, where basically we kind of extend your winter break. You can choose to do a year up, you can choose to take a class, or you can choose to, you know, just extend your vacation. In terms of academics, again, kind of you know, honing in a little bit more on the MIT experience, um, the rigor at MIT we realize is also very different from our the high school side. Um, so in terms of academics, there are certain things that we put in place so that our students can understand how to get used to uh, the academic curricular at MIT. Um, one of the first things is that in our application process, you are able to list what you're interested in. So if you're interested in architecture, if you're interested in urban studies and planning, if you're interested in mechanical engineering, that's all great, um, but you are not locked into that major or locked out of that major. You can always decide to change routes if you like after doing, you know, taking some of your general institute requirements. Which brings me to my next point. We do have general institute requirements, which is kind of known as a core curriculum at other institutions, where we have classes that every single student has to take regardless of your major. So those classes do include biology, chemistry, physics, et cetera. Um, and then also on the flip side of that, um, those classes also include humanities, arts, and social sciences. We are not a trade school. We wanna make sure that our students graduate being well-rounded. And so all of our students do have to take a certain amount of credits in humanities, arts, and social sciences too. But don't worry, many of our um, General Institute requirements also have a STEM bend to it. And we're also past no record. Um, in your first semester at MIT, um, you, will have a pass no record where if you technically fail a course, um, you will be able to kind of have that at not being seen on your, on your transcript. This is one of my favorite classes at MIT, which is called 2009. Yes, this is a class. I always just like to highlight this. This is the capstone for our mechanical engineering students um, where they're able to show off their prototypes of different things that they've created um, throughout the year. Um, and so, yes, it looks like there are a lot of, there's a lot of confetti. There's a band playing in the uh, top left section, um, and they're able to answer questions um, on the spot from the MIT community, and it's also live streamed. So if you have any questions about that, I definitely recommend looking that up online. 
Um, in terms of our campus environment, many of our students uh, do find MIT to be welcoming. And again, like I said, collaborative. Um, outside of the classroom, our students are involved in many different extracurriculars. Um, more than half of our student body uh, does identify as a US minority group. And we make sure that, you know, we are a school that has near gender parity. So all of our classes almost come in at almost a 50-50 breakdown in terms of students who identify as female or male or another gender as well. Um, so in terms of our diversity within our community, that is something that I truly highlight about our campus. In terms of the application, things that you need to know is that we are of not available on common application. You can find us on our website, you can create a portal there. Uh, we have early action and regular action. Um, and this year, in terms of our testing policy, we have suspended our testing requirement. We do encourage you, if you've taken an SAT or ACT, to please list that on your application. Um, but if you have not had the opportunity to test, um, that is not a no longer a requirement uh, for our, um, our admissions process. And there is no benefit to applying early versus applying regular. In terms of financial aid, uh, we are a full need institution. Um, we do meet 100% dem of demonstrated need, um, and we are also need blind. So your ability to afford MIT has nothing to do with the actual decision that you might receive um, in terms of admissions. Um, for any more questions that you have about our, our financial aid process, please do reach out to Student Financial Services. Um, and th these policies are do exist for all students, including international students, DACA students, and undocumented students as well. And I see that I am at time, so I will go ahead and hand it over to the next presenter. Thank you, MIT. And thank you to our students for using the Q&A. Keep those questions coming. We'd like to introduce our next presenter, Southern Methodist University. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Kendall Dacey. I am an assistant director of admission here at SMU. Um, and I only have a few minutes today to tell you about SMU. So hopefully it serves as a great background and introduction to the university, but I definitely encourage you to also learn more, whether that's by visiting campus, exploring our website, um, or getting to know us on social media. Um, one of my favorite parts about SMU is our campus community. I think it is a place that is extremely collaborative. Um, we really try and promote kind of the tagline of you belong here, right? We want all of our students to feel um, welcomed and included and our undergraduate students are at the center of our university as well. Um, and so SMU is a place where you will develop those lifelong friendships, those important relationships with faculty members and connections that will propel your future in areas such as business, healthcare, um, engineering and technology, the arts or education. And so if you um, do not know much about SMU yet, we are located in the heart of Dallas, Texas. Um, and our connections throughout the city really help our students take advantage of their new home. I think our students have a really wonderful experience being that we're only about 10 minutes from downtown Dallas um, to kind of have that quintessential college experience, but also be able to access a lot of different internship, job opportunities, um, and the social life throughout Dallas as well. Um, our students love to kind of get off campus, explore the city, and take advantage of everything that there is to offer while being in a, in a really vibrant, bustling city. Um, and I think Dallas is also a major cultural and career hub, especially for uh, young professionals as well. So there's many, many different opportunities throughout not only your four years in college, but also after graduation as well. And so we are a private uh, mid-sized institution. Um, and while you'll have you know, that big city experience in Dallas, your home at SMU will be a lot more personalized and feel a lot more intimate. Um, our students are gonna benefit from small class sizes, <clears throat> excuse me, and incredible access to faculty. Our average class size is typically around 22 students. Um, and so it might be similar to, you know, the types of classes and the experience that you have now in high school. Our largest class ever on campus is going to be maxed out at 150 students. Um, and so at SMU, all of your classes will feel a little bit smaller, right? We're not going to have any of those really, really large lecture halls um, where it's too intimidating to, to raise your hand and ask a question. Um, we really prioritize giving our students those smaller classes so that you're able to take an active role in your academic experience. Um, typically, we have about 6,800 undergraduates on campus, 
So it's roughly around 1,600 students per grade level. And so it's a really great size in terms of um, being small enough that you know you will you will have a, that sense of community, um, but it's also large enough that you have that wonderful school spirit, the ability to meet people in every new activity that you go to or every new class that you're taking, um, and so it's a really kind of good balance and mix of, of small and large resources. And then at the university. Um, what I really love is that our students bring a wide variety of um, academic interests and personal passions to the university. We have over 100 different majors, about 85 different minors for undergraduates to choose from, and those are spread across our five different academic colleges and schools. Um, and so they're all listed here on this slide. We have a School of Business, Humanities and Sciences, Engineering, the arts and then education and human development. Um, they're all a little bit different and they all specialize in a given area, but what's great is that you can take classes across all five of them if you want to. You're actually going to be encouraged to do that um, with some of our general education courses. Um, and a lot of our students bring that kind of interdisciplinary aspect to their education at SMU. Um, typically between 30 to 40% of our students will double major, um, about 80% have at least one minor, and a lot of students will do those across academic disciplines or across schools. Um, and so you're encouraged to really find, you know, what your passion is and pursue that academic curriculum um, to kind of create your own pathway here at SMU. And then many students will continue their learning outside of the classroom, whether that's through research opportunities, internships, independent projects, or experiential learning opportunities. What that looks like will depend somewhat on what your major or majors are. Um, and so it's a really awesome place where if you do have different interests as well, you can kind of combine those experiences. Um, a lot of our students kind of work on research projects um, affiliated with one of our research centers or institutes on campus. Some of some of my favorite examples um, is our oral history research project, um, where students work together with faculty and staff to create oral history projects about not only the university, but Dallas as well. Um, we also have a new data science research center where students work alongside major corporations and nonprofits. Um, and then a lot of social justice, public policy research, as well as an entrepreneurship institute where students are able to develop their own business plans um, and compete for seed funding also. And then beyond that, a lot of our students will go on to do internships at major Fortune 500 companies um, located throughout Dallas, as well as throughout many other major cities and locations in the country and in the world as well. And then beyond kind of the, the I guess, career-oriented um, experiences at SMU, our students also have an exceptional work-life balance. We really encourage them to make the most of their college experience. There are so many opportunities to get involved with um, at SMU, and I'd say the average student is probably involved in about three separate, three to four separate activities um, during their time at SMU. And so those can span uh, different academic or different campus organizations like religious life, Greek life, academic clubs, study abroad, as well as athletics. And so there's a lot of different things to participate in. Um, and then I'm going to skip ahead to our admission process just so I can touch base on this. But we do accept the Common App, Apply Texas, or the My Coalition application. And then we have two deadlines. And so you want to choose whichever deadline or application round is going to work best for you and your process. Um, and then at SMU, we use a holistic admission process. And so we do not have any minimum test scores or GPAs. Um, we're going to look at several different admission factors when we review your application. And then we also automatically consider students for academic merit scholarships. Um, and so the top 30 to 40% of our students will be offered an academic merit scholarship. And then you can also apply for need-based financial aid by submitting the FAFSA and the CSS profile. Um, that's really all that I have time for today. But if you want to reach out and get more information, we definitely encourage you to do so. Um, but thank you so much for, for joining. Hopefully this was a good um, introduction but I'm going to send it off to our next presenter. Thank you, M uh, Southern Methodist University, SMU. I'd like to turn it over to our last presenter today, Virginia Tech. All right, hi everyone. I'm gonna put this, pull up my presentation. 
So uh, my name is Pedro Baiza Martinez. I serve as an admissions counselor here in the Office of Undergraduate Admissions at Virginia Tech. On the screen, you have a QR code. So if you are interested in learning more about Virginia Tech, um, since today's is a quick presentation, please feel free to scan it, provide your information, and we'll be in touch with you. Um, but diving right into things, uh, Virginia Tech, uh, we were founded in 1872. We are a large uh, land-granted public research institution. We have 36,000 students, 30,000 being undergraduates, 6,000 being graduates. Um, on the map, you see where we are located. Uh, we're in the Southwest uh, region in the Blue Ridge Mountains. So we are very much so, you see it's an uh, aerial view of the campus. Um, so lots of things to do, recreation activities, such as tubing, canoeing, hiking, uh, cave exploring, and things of that nature. Although we are a pretty large institution, uh, we have a 14 to one student to faculty ratio. So you definitely have the small school vibes to it where you're able to continue your cohort as well as your professors. And then the average class size average at Tech is between 25 and 30. So although um, granted your first years of, of the entry level courses will be about 100 plus, but typically just your first semester or two, once you get those out the way, you'll dive into the classes where they dive down to about 25 to 30 um, overall. One of the biggest things that sets us aside from different institutions is our commitment to service. Um, at Virginia Tech, our motto is group program, which means that I may serve. And in, um, it's not for that, I may, um, for that I may serve. And the biggest way we get back to service um, in preserving our original identity as a military institute is to our core cadets program. We are one of 16 new military academies in the nation, and then one of two that have a core cadets on the college campus. Uh, we have two different routes you can take. You can do the citizen leaders track or the ROTC track. But the ROTC track, we do have everything set Coast Guard. So the nice thing is that um, the, the, the difference between the two is that the RTC, you have the community to listen to military post-graduation, right? The citizen leader track, same structure, same rigor, just no commitment post-graduation. Um, how do you apply to Virginia Tech? Uh, we're on two platforms. We have the coalition and the common application. Our application is open August 1st. Uh, one thing to note is we asked them not to apply for these full email, simply because a lot of school emails are kind of filter or block outside emails to come in. So we want to make sure you don't miss any important information regarding Virginia Tech. Um, one thing that you're going to remember from our presentation, or you should remember from our presentation, is that at Virginia Tech, major matters. Your major will ultimately determine how competitive the review process will be and what we're going to focus on. Um, on the screen, we have all seven of our colleges listed with two professional graduate schools. So collectively, we offer 120 different majors to choose from. Uh, probably we're best known for is our STEM field, particularly our engineering program. Um, our engineering program is nationally and internationally ranked and recognized. We have the tallest drone park on a college campus in the nation. And within engineering, we offer 14 different majors. Um, but a lot of our other programs are well known. For example, our architecture program ranks top 10. Uh, Pamplin College of Business is in the country. So, and then our college of natural resources consistently raising the top five for our program. So um, like I said, a lot of different options. What we're definitely for is our engineering program. And then uh, we have the veterinary school of medicine um, attached to us and the Clinton School of Medicine. Um, we do offer what's known as a holistic review. So we have the academics and then the personal side of the application review process. When it comes to the academics, we have um, a pretty unique process. We do not require letters of recommendation. We do not require resumes, interviews, or official transcripts at the time that you apply. Uh, you're going to self-report all your classes, grades, and any test scores should you decide to provide them. Um, one of the big things to note is that we don't focus too much on classroom for GPA. What we're focused more is on the academic rigor. So what classes have you taken? So AP, IB, dual enrollment, honors, and then the grades you received in those courses. Um, one thing to note is because we are major driven, whatever major you're applying to is pretty much where we're going to place our emphasis on. So if you're applying to engineering, we want to see the math and science classes be your most rigorous as well as your strongest grades, business, math classes, and then so on and so forth. The other side of things is our personal side of the application. Um, we have four group pros and essays responses around the service, um, on the topics of service, resilience, leadership, and long-term goals. This is really what we want to see, get to know more, more about you that isn't reflected on the academics. Um, and overall, the, the personal side has about 30% of the admissions decision. So for our, our competitive majors like engineering, we definitely recommend um, making sure that you do your best on these essays as sometimes this can be the deciding factor. We have three different deadlines for students, for incoming freshmen, early decision, early action, and regular. Um, early decision is binding. Early action is a priority pool. This is where most of our offers will come from. And then we have regular decision, and we're very transparent about it, as you can see on the screen. Um, it's space availability. So with our top majors, like engineering, business, architecture, um, 
If there are no more seats available by regular decision, the best we can do is wait with you. So putting yourself in the best position possible to receive an offer from us, uh, definitely apply early decision or early action. Here's our cost to attendance I'm on the screen for in-state and out-of-state, tuition and fees for a full-time student, and then the average cost of room and board. Um, uh, the, you are able to, to bring down these costs significantly by doing our one application known as a general scholarship application. Um, we need this, the FAFSA as well as the scholarship, but due January 22nd, and this one application will take into account need-based, merit, departmental, and residency. So if we are out of state and we have any out of state scholarships, we're able to award you the, all these through just one application. Um, so as I wrap up, why Virginia Tech, here are some quick fun facts about us. We have an 86% graduation rate with a national average of 62. 82% of our undergraduate students are employed uh, for senior education six months after graduation. If we extend that to a two year span, it jumps from 82 to 94. And then we have over a 90% retention rate from first to second year. So this goes to show that our students fall in love with Virginia Tech and make Virginia Tech their home for the next four to five years. Um, so follow us on social media though. And like I said, I know this was a quick presentation. Um, I have the QR code again on the screen if you're interested in learning more about Virginia Tech and kind of staying in the loop. Um, I'll say that TikTok is the newest sensation that we have, very immersive to the student life experience and the residence halls. And of course, at the bottom, there's a more traditional route of getting in touch with us. But thank you all. Thank you, Virginia Tech. We have just a few minutes left, and I'd like to maybe propose a question to our panelists, invite them back on to uh, turn on their cameras and their microphones. And just propose a question. Uh, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And maybe we'll ask our friends at uh, Caltech to start. Any advice for people in the college search process? Um, yeah, so my advice to folks in the college search process is to really focus on um, following your um, passion when you are um, writing your applications and thinking about a school. Um, this is a really big decision. And I think that a lot of students, um, especially when they're filling out their applications are thinking about you know, what does the school want to see and things like that. But, you know, we're really looking to see what you are passionate about, not what you think we want to see. Um, so um, really pay attention to those. Um, if you have uh, like Caltech has supplemental essay questions to use those to show us a little bit about you and um, your personality. Thank you. Great advice. Uh, Harvey Mudd College, any advice you would give someone going through the college search process? Yeah, I think that um, really students sometimes are, are thinking a lot about or stressing a lot about like what the what is expected of them, what what they should be presenting. And I think that what you're what you should do at your touch points, if, if possible, through your essay, if the college you're interested in applying to as an interview, that's something I would I would recommend taking advantage of because it gives you the sort of one on one with the school, it gives you a better opportunity to um, to determine whether you feel like it would be a good social fit, depending if you're talking to a student or an admission counselor, but really using those, um, those touch points, those personal touch points to provide like an authentic view of yourself. Don't feel like you have to have someone review your essays several times over to where it doesn't sound like you. We really just wanna know what kind of person you are, what your real interests are. And um, so I think that's something that I wanna emphasize. Thank you very much. Those are good uh, pieces of advice. I would like to now just go to our final screen. And I'll Thanks to everyone for joining us today. When you close this window, there'll be a link to a very quick five question survey and would appreciate any feedback you can provide. As a reminder, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all the other session recordings at strivescan.com backslash yes prep. Thanks to everyone and have a great day.